Thank you. Okay, maybe you're new to Reflex. Maybe you're new to the genre and you want to produce a map. What are the basic fundamental things that you need to know to get up and running quickly and easily? Well, there's scale. I'm going to talk about scale briefly. On the horizontal, you want to, you want to base things off of 160 units. You can use increments or divisions of that. You can also branch out to things like 64, even 32 unit width platforms, things like that, you know. But a standard corridor and a standard room is going to be built out of cubes, essentially, or squares, tiles that are 160 units by 160 units. This gives you the adequate width to a corridor, so splash damage can barely be avoided by wall strafing. Um, so, if you do want to make a, a particularly punishing choke, you can drop this down, maybe do an 80 unit wide kind of choke or something like that. It's totally possible, but this is your the standard sort of horizontal scale. Now when we talk about vertical scale, we're generally basing things off of 192 units and then uh, divisions of that where 64 is added or subtracted generally. Uh, this is illustrated quite clearly by the stairs. Uh, 128 units being like two of the three um, thirds of a level. 100, uh, sorry, 64 units, small staircase being one third of a level. Now again, obviously you can break these down into smaller or larger sizes, whatever you want to do. Totally flexible. This is a good base to work from. Obviously the 128 unit staircase is going to allow you to triple jump, whilst the 64 unit staircase is going to allow you to double jump. You can also double jump off of ramps, and the angle or incline is going to affect how much height slash horizontal velocity you get from said double jump. But anyway, back to the topic at hand, scale. Another thing to mention about vertical scale is ceilings are as standard placed at 192 units also. Now why is this, you might ask? Well, it's so that when a player is slowly creeping around the map using stealth as a tactic in a match, they cannot be affected by splash damage from the ceiling, revealing their position to their opponent. Except if they're jumping, obviously they're going to be making a lot of noise, giving away their location, and that splash damage becomes possible for affecting their movement, perhaps knocking them off course, uh, buying you an opportunity to intercept or just slow them down, something like that. So again, 192 is your standard sort of vertical value that you want to be working from. Um, we can also illustrate the types of rocket jumps. Um, so much the types of rocket jumps. We can illustrate how moving around levels on this scale with rocket jumps looks. This is obviously a single level, and we have, well, this is a uh, two-level stack. Here we've subtracted 64 units, here we've added 64 units to a two-level uh, uh, column. Now, forgive my terrible movement, but I should be able to demonstrate the ease of reaching um, a first level platform, and then the uh, method for really reaching a second level platform. Obviously a rocket jump, the maximum height will allow you to travel one and two thirds of a level, provided you have the stack. Okay, so I think that basically covers what you need to know about scale, except one more thing. 
um, angles. Now, I didn't particularly measure this one out. It's just a long corridor to demonstrate what we're looking at. This, this thing over here is roughly the size of a player hitbox. You just want to consider the angles in your map. How many, how many angles are available um, from a specific location? How vulnerable is it? How many bolt angles can potentially be uh, uh, utilized against a certain position? You know, this is all something to consider. But when it comes down to scale, we're obviously just talking about, say, the max range of an ion cannon and the max range of a bolt rifle. Um, I believe a bolt rifle is effectively infinite. It's probably not. It's probably just really long. But you want to keep a handle on those angles. Um, a good example is ZTN. If you look at that angle down at the mega health on ZTN, that's basically as extreme as you want to get. Uh, otherwise, the player hitbox becomes so minuscule that you're pixel hunting and it's just not quite the same. <laughs> it's not quite the same. You should be able to, you know, uh, just flick a bolt angle or something like that and it shouldn't require you to slow down and be hunting for a minuscule hitbox that's miles and miles away. So, uh, and, and we can segue quite nicely from that into the number of atriums that you have within a map. Now, atrium layout is something that provides a lot of room for creativity. Uh, you can get sort of overlapping designs or very segmented designs. You can take it whatever direction you really want to. But as standard, we see a certain number of atriums in dual, at least. And that is two, three, or four atriums. Now, two atrium maps are quite difficult to balance. Um, due to the lack of atriums, you've got items piling up on top of each other, essentially. It makes it easier to run the map, because you, you just have a harder time spreading those items out effectively. The most common number of atriums, you know, we see this in almost everything, Arrow Walk being prime example. Three atriums um, makes it really easy to distribute those standard item sets, whether that's two greens, yellow, red, mega, or yellow, uh, uh, yellow, yellow, red, mega. Uh, and then also you can go to four atriums, but you're, you're, again, you're starting to deal with a lot of space um, depending on your layout, whether you're uh, making it very vertical, stacking things on top of one another, um, you're dealing with a lot of space, so you've got to watch those angles. You don't want anything to be getting Justy. too extreme. Thanks for that follow, and I think that basically covers what you need to know to just run wild in Reflex's level editor. So have fun, and produce some great maps.